So would you like to know some top tips for growing roses? Or is there a rose in your garden that's not doing too well and you'd like to know how to improve it? I'm here at the well-known rose gardens at Hever Castle with head gardener Neil Miller to find out more about choosing and growing roses in your garden. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel and blog. Hever Castle is very well known for its beautiful rose gardens, but what it's actually most famous for is being the childhood home of Anne Boleyn, Henry VIII's fated second wife, and it was also owned for a while by Anne of Cleves, his fourth wife. But the gardens as you see them today were created at vast expense by America's richest man, William Waldorf Astor, who bought Hever Castle in 1903 and spent a million pounds creating the garden, and that would be worth 110 million today. There are colonnades, there are classical statues. There's a, a lake that was dug out by 800 men over two years. And the Rose Garden is now in what would have been his enormous and beautiful orangery. So tell me a bit about the Rose Garden at Hever. Right, yes, um, hi there. Right, yeah, the rose garden here is probably our centrepiece. It's a, a wall garden and it houses, uh, the last count, just over 4,000, mainly floribundas, hybrid teas, climbers, and a few of the little ramblers as well thrown in. So what do we need to think about when we choose a rose for our garden? Well, the first thing is, where would you like the rose to go? There are loads of different roses. You can have some very formal roses, like the hybrid teas are the lovely, the upright one with one big kind of bloom on top. You have the old fashioned English roses that sometimes, if you've got a herbaceous border, they look nicer in a herbaceous border. So it's really thinking to start with where I would like the rose in my garden. That's the first step. And then depending if it's shady, if it's sunny, if you want a rose going up a pergola and that lot. So it really just looking at your garden thinking, I'd like some roses in my garden. That area there looks good and then start to do a wee bit of homework. The homework really is, is, is probably the best bit. Nowadays we can go online or probably the best thing is go to your local nursery. Uh, garden centres, okay, but I prefer the kind of um, nurseries. Look, look up online, there's loads of them about and go and talk to the people. You know, the, the, a lot of people just go to the garden centres and just pick up a rose without knowing what to do, but actually talk to the staff and just get a feel of the rose you want. Do you want a coloured one? Do you want a really highly scented one? So really, it's just doing a bit of homework, talking to people, and also, I always think, look at the gardens around you. If there are no roses in that area, that may be telling you something. So you just look next door, down the road, so it's just, just getting the feel of the surroundings. So do roses grow well in shade? The shade there is one that I absolutely adore. Um, it's a kind of a smallish kind of climber called Zephyrin Druin. Um, it's a great one. It's a really old fashioned one. The smell on the scale is knockout. The bonus, it doesn't have any thorns and it does like shade. So again, doing a bit of homework. Most people think roses love full sun but there are quite a few out there that do like shade on a north, north facing wall. Can rose bushes grow in pots? And if so, which ones are best? Right, yeah, roses again, people think roses in your garden, but pots as well. A lot of people don't have large gardens, they may just have a patio, but pots. The first thing you must uh, look out for, do get a terracotta pot. The terracotta pots breathe, the water breathes. Plastic pots, it can get very hot and the roots can actually kind of, kind of get scorched. Again, any rose in a pot, obviously you, you've got to be a bit sensible. You don't really want to put a climber or a rambler, but the hybrid, probably the hybrid teas and floribundas, the slightly formal ones in a pot, make sure there's lots of organic matter in them. Again, roses are extremely hungry. And the key thing is water, water, water. But the formal ones, rather than the old fashioned ones, which will tend to flop all over the place, but a hybrid tea or a floribunda would be perfect in a pot. One stem with one big bloom on top. That is a hybrid tea. Um, and a floribunda, or they call it now, I think a multi-cluster uh, rose, is kind of one stem and then it has probably a cluster of six or eight smallish flowers um, on that stem. I wouldn't say there's one specific one that's good for a pot. If you just do all the right housekeeping, feed, water, deadhead, um, you, you can't go wrong. Can a rose be moved? Again, this is a thing that lots, if you look in textbooks, my good, moving a rose. Yes, a rose can be um, moved if you've planted it in one position and you think, oh, really, 
it's outgrown that, but make sure you do it in the dormant season. So that means when the leaves have dropped off, so normally between November and March. Uh, um, all roses are deciduous, so when they go to sleep during the winter, you can dig them up and then move them. But be very air on the side of caution moving them um, in, in, the, in the summer. Uh, they won't like it, but when they're, when they're asleep, perfect. The root system of a rose is a bit bizarre. It kind of has like a large tap root and the root is quite big and bulky and it can spread a lot. So if you've got a really old rose, um, you need lots of the new fibrous roots for it to kind of um, take. So a very old rose, it may be a bit hit and miss um, to actually move it, so, yeah. Many people have got roses in their garden that they didn't plant, that were planted by their predecessors. How do you find out which rose I have? The first thing is don't jump in uh, guns blazing. Leave that rose for a year. First of all, you just want to see how much growth it puts on. Uh, how does it flower? If it only flowers for two, um, two weeks of the year, you'll know it's probably a rambler, but just have a look. Um, identify it, there's plenty of kind of, um, on the social kind of network um, and reference books that you can identify. Lots of the rose breeders, you can go on out like the RHS, you can kind of ring them up or post pictures so you can get it identified. But I wouldn't go into it, I don't like roses. Keep it for a season and see what it does. So why do rose leaves turn yellow or brown or get those black marks on them? Um, there is a disease, um, it's a fungal disease called black spot. That is the key thing. Everyone, if you talk to anyone about roses, oh my God, my rose has got black spot. A lot of the modern roses now are actually bred that they don't have um, this kind of genetic kind of a malfunction and gets black spot. But a lot of the old roses do. And it's a fungal, um, a fungal disease. And it really is spores that lie in the ground. And then during the kind of, when it warms up, these spores come out and start attacking uh, the rose. It doesn't do the rose any harm, but it looks horrible. Um, so any of those dead leaves um, that fall on the ground, you must not compost because the fungal disease can spread. So kind of burn them or take them down to a, a, an official dump. Uh, yellow, again, um, it's usually a sign of some kind of um, deficiency. So roses are again very, very hungry. We kind of um, feed the roses continuously throughout the year. So if the leaves go slightly yellow, it's saying, hang on a minute, I need a bit of, I need a bit of tonic. I need to top up with some food. So why hasn't my rose flowered? First thing, you probably haven't been talking to it. <laughs> um, it's a lot of roses, majority of the roses kind of flower on the new growth. So when you prune them, you don't prune them too late in the season, because if you start to prune them too late in the season, you're technically cutting off the buds for the growth that, um, for that year. Again, the other thing is, if, uh, if you don't have, you should have flowers. A rose will actually flower in its, kind of second or, uh, in its first or second year. It could just be the feeding, but majority of people that kind of ring up and say, my rose hasn't flowered, it's because they're pruning them at the wrong time. Why are the rosebuds not opening? Yeah, again, this is one thing. Um, a lot of the roses out there, um, you get the buds forming and then suddenly the buds just go a bit. Sometimes it is, there's a disease, fungal growth called mildew. Lots of the other ones, especially some of the old fashioned English roses, um, they have um, the, the, the kind of the pe peony shaped um, rose. When the buds start to open, if the weather becomes inclement, the water actually kind of uh, falls into the bud. They call it kind of bud blast, and the bud technically rots before it opens. So it's just keeping an eye on it, keeping, doing a bit of homework on the roses, but certain roses, if they have a, like the peony shaped ones, they do tend, as the water gets into the bud, it can actually kind of, um, kind of flop over. Again, heat as well, you've got new fleshy buds coming in and we have a very hot spell those buds can actually scorch. Here, here, it doesn't happen a lot, but if it does happen, cut them off and obviously the new shoots will come and hopefully you'll get some more blooms. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Which plants go best with roses? Our rose garden here is um, very kind of um, contemporary. It's very formal, so we just have roses, roses and roses. But um, we have our herbaceous border. So lots of herbaceous plants you can kind of plant around them. Some people plant some companion planting because obviously roses do get pests and diseases, um, kind of pot marigolds, various things like that, even lavender you can underplant. But you just got to look at the rose, see how high it grows, and then anything really will grow around the base of it. But you just got to look at the height. You don't want kind of something taken away.
to me the rose is the show person that's the formal side and then you can just have a carpet of anything uh, low growing um, underneath it so how should I feed my roses? If I explain what we do here at Heva, uh, we kind of, once we've done the pruning, um, at the beginning of the season, we give um, the roses a, it's a granular feed. Um, you can get it from most garden centres and nurseries. It's just called rose feed. Um, you sprinkle it on and that, is a high, that gives the rose a real big boost. Uh, we just kind of put it round the circle, uh, not so it, doesn't, so it doesn't touch the rose, and then the rain, and we just water it and it leaches into the soil. We also then put a, um, a slow release fertilizer. So you can get them from garden centers. It looks like little hundreds and thousands. That's sprinkled on the bed and those nutrients will then break down and that will feed the rose between three and six months. And then another feed of um, the high energy in about July, August, once the roses have had their first flush, they kind of calm down a bit just to give them another boost till the end of the year. So how do you deal with aphids on your roses? We have a kind of a period maybe of like two or three weeks at Heva that my goodness me you go in and the roses are actually kind of covered in mainly green fly they're all kind of I mean, nibbling away at the new sweet buds we here do nothing at all they have lots of sprays on the market and that will kind of kill the green fly but we want to keep lots of beneficial insects here you want the ladybirds you want the hoverflies because they eat the aphids so we literally leave the aphids it doesn't do any harm for two weeks and then probably after two weeks they've all gone you'll see the blackbirds and the thrushes walking around with big bellies um, you can get sprays from garden centers and nurseries but the best thing is with the green fly if your thumb and finger or a bit of soapy water helps the gardens at Heva Castle are open to the public and there are miniature model houses. You can hire boats for the lake. There's a maze and a water maze and a playground and lots more. And it's also available for private or corporate hire such as weddings. And you can stay the night there in the Astor and Berlin wings. So I'll leave a link in the description below. We've got some wonderful gardens coming up. I'm talking about a dry garden in the future. We've got a marvellous wildlife garden, a north facing garden, and also a long border that's absolutely packed with interest of the kind that I only thought that professional gardeners could do. So if you'd like more tips, ideas, and inspiration for your garden, then do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>